Alright, how's it going, my peeps? It is now time for the TNA Slammiversary 2012 prediction game video. And I'm kind of late on this. I wanted to post this up either on Friday or maybe even Thursday. Uh, but, you know, this is one of TNA's biggest shows of the year. It's their 10th anniversary. They've got a bunch of matchups on the card, actually, nine matchups. That's pretty big for a pay per view. So, you know what they say, better late than never, so I'm posting this up on a Saturday. I used to post up my prediction game videos on a Saturday anyways, until I moved to like Fridays, or even earlier in some cases. But anyways, uh, let's get down to business. You know, you've got nine matchups here, so I'll go through every single matchup and give you guys my prediction for uh, each one and maybe go into more detail in the actual videos, you know, uh, simulated matchups themselves on why I think you know, the, the guy I picked is going to win. So, uh, let's start off with uh, probably the, like, the most uh, random matchup ever on the pay-per-view. This matchup came out of, like, nowhere. Whoever came up with this matchup was probably, you know, in the office, just bored, and decided to add this matchup to the card just like that. It, it makes absolutely no sense. I don't know why this match is even on the card. The, you know, the, the two superstars involved in the matchups haven't been on TV in a long while. So you probably know what match I'm talking about right now. But then again, maybe you don't because these guys haven't been on TV in a long time. And they didn't even announce this match on TV. They just put the matchup up on ImpactWrestling.com. On the page where they advertise the pay-per-view and show you the matchups. So yeah, the match is... It's a non-title match. You know, neither of these two guys hold the title anyways. It's not a number one contenders match. Uh, it's just Kid Cash, who we haven't seen on TV in a long while, versus Hernandez, who we equally haven't seen on TV in a long time. The last time I saw Hernandez was when he was managing or accompanying, you know, being accompanying, uh, what's his name, Anarchia to the ring when he was, you know, getting squashed by Kurt Angle. So, and that's like a month back or even more. And it's just such an, you know, an, an odd matchup. You know, it's, these two guys, you know, have no history against each other. It just makes no sense to me. And really, who's the face? Who's the heel? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> last time I checked, you know, Kid Cash was a face. And Hernandez, I mean, Kid Cash was a heel, sorry. And Hernandez was also a heel. Are they still both going to be heels? Or is Kid Cash now turning face that he's coming back? Or is Hernandez dropping Mexico, Mexican America and turning face? I don't know. Are they both going to be heels? One of them going to be a heel? One of them going to be a face? It's it's just a weird matchup, you know? <laughs> and on top of that, you know, apart from this match, they've got eight other matches on the card, as well as a TNA Hall of Fame announcement. So it doesn't seem like they need this extra time to fill, you know, with this type of matchup. But at the same time, who am I, you know, to uh, know that or, you know, say that? Maybe they do need the extra time. But, you know, in my opinion, they could have used this extra time, maybe taken out this match, and used the extra time for any of the other matches. Maybe add, you know, let's say the Kid Cash versus Hernandez match was going to last seven minutes. They could have used this seven minutes to add it to the world title match, the number one contendership match, Austin Aries versus Samoa Joe. You know what I'm talking about. So yeah, it's just a weird matchup, uh, but who, you know, who knows, you know, maybe they, they've got big plans for Kid Cash or Hernandez, that's why they're putting them on at Slammiversary at one of their biggest shows in a match. But anyways, uh, as far as who I think is going to win, uh, <laughs> this match is actually one of the hardest ones to predict, as well as this other match I'm going to talk about later. Uh... I guess I'll go with Kid Cash, maybe, just because it seems like they've lost all the hope in Hernandez. So, yeah, I guess Kid Cash is my pick on this one. Anyways, uh, other match. Let's go to Devon and Garrett Bischoff versus Robbie E and Rob Terry. Now, how many times have Devon and Robbie E faced off now? It seems like every single week, you've got Devon and Robbie E facing off ever since... Devon won the title from him. Every single week, there's some sort of interaction, it seems, between Robbie E and Devon. Maybe not a match, but some sort of interaction, like Robbie attacks him or something. So, uh, yeah, this thing's been going on for a long while now. This isn't a title match, obviously. It's just a tag team match between Devon and Garrett. 
And um, I'm going to go with Devon and Garrett on this one. I think maybe they want to split up Robbie and Rob, Rob Terry soon. So maybe, I don't know, Rob Terry gets pinned here. Or Robbie gets pinned because of Rob Terry or something like that. Something that causes tension between the two. And uh, either Rob Terry turns on Robbie E or probably the most likely scenario would be Robbie E turning on Rob Terry. Well, actually, no, that doesn't make any sense. No, I, I see Robbie E saying, you know, heal and Rob Terry turning face. So that would mean Rob Terry would turn on Robbie E because Robbie E would, would, treat, him, would treat him badly or something like that. I don't know. But my pick for this match, Devon and Garrett. And then you've got... Knockout Championship, a rematch um, from the last pay-per-view. It's Gail Kim versus Miss Tessmacher. Uh, apparently, they changed her name. You know, it used to be... Well, actually, you know, when she debuted it, it was Miss Tessmacher. Then it was Broke Tessmacher. And now it's back to Miss Tessmacher, I guess, because Brooke Hogan is now in TNA, so they don't want to get uh, the Brooks uh, mixed together or whatever. And uh, as far as this match goes, if you watch my previous TNA prediction game videos, um, you know I think Gail Kim's gonna you know hold on to the title for a long while, at least until Bound for Glory. So uh, I think she retains here. I don't think she's gonna lose in a rematch against you know Miss Tessmacher. So yeah, my pick for this match, Gail Kim. And then you've got Crimson, Crimson's Open Challenge. Um, well. I'm not sure, you know, who's going to be Crimson's, you know, uh, <laughs> Crimson's freaking challenger on this one. But, like, I don't know. Is it, is it going to be this new guy in TNA making his debut? Is it going to be an old star, major star, maybe from WCW? Um, or is it just going to be some TNA star returning or just some TNA star that hasn't been on TV in a week, maybe, or something? I don't know. Um... Uh, I'll, I'll take my guesses in the actual video itself of Crimson's Open Challenge simulation, so uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, in the comment section, you know, give me your predictions and tell me, you, you know, obviously your predictions for every single matchup, as well as who you think Crimson's opponent's gonna be. But since, you know, there's so many choices for Crimson's opponent, if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter. So, yeah. Anyways, afterwards, Joseph Park, aka Abyss, versus Bully Ray. Um, I'm gonna go with Joseph Park on this one. I don't, you know, Bully Ray's kind of been on this losing streak on pay-per-views lately. So, I just think it's gonna continue. Which is why I'm gonna go with Joseph Park on this one. Um, I'm thinking, you know, he's gonna be, maybe he's gonna get beat up, you know, in the matchup. Most of the, you know, most of the matchup. And then, uh, starts, I don't know, start using some moves. Uh, of his abyss repertory or whatever, uh, you know, freaking black hole slam, something like that. I don't know, <laughs> but I think Joseph Park's gonna win. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna reveal that he's abyss, you know, at Slamversary or maybe later, but I think Joseph Park is gonna win. And then tag team championship match: Kurt Angle teaming up with AJ Styles versus Kazarian and Daniels. And this match, this is the other hard to predict match for me. Well, actually, there's a bunch of them, but um, yeah, this is this one's hard. Um, you know, Daniels and Kazarian just won the tag team championships at the last pay per view, which was Sacrifice. Um, and at the same time, would they really make Kurt Angle and AJ Styles lose, especially Kurt Angle, lose to Kazarian and Daniels? But at the same time, once again. Kurt Angle, you know, from what I watch and stuff, you know, it doesn't seem like he minds putting, you know, guys over like that. So, I don't know. It could go either way. Maybe Daniels and Kazarian just won the titles off Samoa Joe and Magnus. So, you know, face team, the team, the team of Kurt Angle and AJ Styles could take the titles off the heels, Daniels and Kazarian, instead of taking them off, you know, Samoa Joe and Magnus. Um. I don't know. I guess I'll go with Daniels and Kazarian retaining, maybe, just because I don't think this thing between AJ and Dixie is over. But really, it, if Kurt Angle and AJ win, I'm not going to be surprised. It could go either way, I think. But I'm going to go with Daniels and Kazarian retaining somehow, some way. And then you got Austin Aries versus Samojo. 
And this match should be a good match. It's an all title match, by the way, so, uh, you know, Samojo, if Samojo does win, he's not gonna win the X Division Championship. And most of the time, when it's a non title match, I uh, usually pick, you know, the, the guy that's not the champion. Uh, just because it's a non title match, so they don't have much to lose by, you know, giving this guy a non title win over the champion. But seeing how Samojo, you know, gets treated as, you know, one on one guy. As a singles competitor lately, I, I, I'm thinking Austin Aries is gonna win this one. I don't think Samoa Joe's gonna win this. Um, maybe he wins, but honestly, the chances of him winning, in my opinion, are pretty slim. And Austin Aries been winning a lot of matches lately, a lot of big matches. Last pay per view, he be he beat Bully Ray, impressive victory. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think it's gonna keep going well for Austin Aries. I think he's gonna win this one too. Eventually, leading up to you know, champion versus champion match, Austin Aries versus Bobby Roode, the longest reigning X Division champion versus the longest reigning TNA World Heavyweight Champion. That that would be a cool match to see, you know, both champions are the longest reigning champions, you know, um, of their, you know, respective championships. So, it'd be a cool match to see. Uh, so, yeah, I think Austin Aries is going to win this one. And then you've got Rob Van Dam versus Jeff Hardy versus Mr. Anderson. In a three-way match for the number one contendership, uh, this sh this could be a good match. I don't think Rob Van Dam's gonna win this. I'm gonna say this right off the bat. I don't think RVD's gonna win this. It's either Jeff Hardy or Anderson, in my opinion. Now, who's gonna win between these two? <laughs> um, well, Jeff's you know Jeff's challenged Bobby Roode for the title so many times now, while Anderson not so much. I don't think he's had one even one title match against Bobby Roode. He's had, you know, some non-title matches, but I'm pretty sure he hasn't had, you know, one-on-one -on -one title match against Bobby Roode. But I might be wrong. Maybe he did have one. But if he did, it's only one. Not not many like Jeff Hardy. Uh, I guess I'm going to go with maybe Anderson on this one just because of that fact. Just because of the fact that Anderson hasn't faced off uh, for the title, you know, against Roode, um, you know, as many times, I guess, as Jeff Hardy. Rob Van Dam has only faced Rude for the title once, but he just faced him for the title the last pay-per-view, so I don't think he's going to win this one. I don't think he's going to be challenging for the title once again this soon. So yeah, my pick, I guess, is Anderson. If Ander Anderson doesn't win, I'm thinking Jeff wins. If RVD wins, I'll be surprised. So yeah, Anderson is my pick for the three-way match for the number, con number one contendership. Anyways, Sting versus Rude for the title. We've had this match, not a sacrifice, but the pay-per-view before that. I don't even know why they made this match for this pay-per-view. They just put this thing in there against Rude again. Honestly, I think it should have been Rude versus Angle. But hey, whatever, man. Sting versus Rude. I'm going to go with Rude on this one. Why would why would Sting win this one? Uh, so yeah, Bobby Rude is my pick. And I think he's going to retain the championship here. The last match they had was a non-title match and he won it. So why would he lose the title match at Slammiversary? Uh, really, I think he's going to hold the title just like Gail Kim until Bound for Glory, where he's going to lose it to James Storm. That's still my prediction. That's been my prediction ever since lockdown, ever since James Storm lost against Bobby Roode. I, I've been like, okay, he's going to win back the title. At, well, yeah, win back the title at Bound for Glory against Roode to finish off the feud. So yeah, my pick, Bobby Roode for this match. So that, that, that's it for the matchups. Uh, so yeah, those are the matchups. You can give me your predictions too. If you get every single one of them right, you win the prediction game. Don't forget, if you get, you know, the Crimson's Open Challenge wrong, you know, that doesn't matter. Uh, so if you get that wrong, but get all the others right, it's cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's about it. And as far as the TNA Hall of Fame goes, really, it sh I think it should be either AJ or Jeff Jarrett. One of those two guys. It shouldn't be anybody else, in my opinion, as a first inductee into the TNA Hall of Fame. I'm thinking it's going to be AJ Styles, but it could be Jeff Jarrett as well, since apparently Karen Jarrett has been bashing Dixie Carter on uh, Twitter, kayfabe-wise, uh, lately. So anyways, that's about it, guys, for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, you can click that like button. That really helps me out. It helps the channel grow as well. And uh, thank you for watching, thank you for support guys, and I'm out, see ya.